Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about Problem Set 3, Grocery List of CS50 Introduction to Programming with Python. So, uh, if you would like to know more about programming or if you have any questions about the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have another view about the code, alright? We do not support plagiarism. So let's just start here. Basically, in Grocery List, we're going to implement a program that prompts the user for an item, one per line, until the user inputs Ctrl D. Then output the user's grocery list in all uppercase, sorted alphabetically by item, prefixing each line with the number of times the user inputted that item. No need to pluralize the items, treat the user's input case insensitively. So what do we have in here basically? We're going to uh, get the user input, apple, banana, banana and ice cream. And once the user click Ctrl D, we're going to output how many times uh, uh, these items were uh, were set in here in the terminal, all right? And in alphabetical order, so we can see here one apple, two banana, and one ice cream, all right? All uppercase. So this is what we're gonna do, all right? Let's see here. I already did the pseudo code for us, okay? So we're going to get, so we're going to follow step by step in here while we're solving. Basically, we're going to create a dictionary to store all the the items that we are getting from the user and we're gonna count these items, all right? Then we're gonna loop forever and we're gonna try to get the user input, check if the items is already in the dictionary, do the count, right, of the, the item. And otherwise, if the user click Ctrl D, we're going to print all the items in alphabetical order, all right? And uh, we already have here some code, but let's see step by step, okay? Let's first understand what is a dictionary. So basically in here, like we can see, see in W3 schools, it is a really good resource if you want to know more about uh, Python or other languages, all right? They explain you every, every little thing, every little concept about that language. So here we can see that dictionaries are used to store data values in key value pairs. A dictionary is a collection which is stored, which is ordered, changeable, and do not allow duplicates, all right? So we normally put here the name, this dict, okay? And we use equals and curly brackets. Bracket, all right, we must use curly bracket here. This is how Python understands that we are working with a dictionary. Then, do you see here, this is the key value pair, all right? So every line that we have in, here inside the curly bracket is a specific item in our dictionary, all right? So what is a key value pair? The key is the left part here, all right, before the colon, and the value is after the colon, okay? So if we want to reach the brain, if we want to reach Ford, we know that Ford is a branch. So branch Ford is one pair, key pair. Model Mustang is another key value pair. And the year 1964 is another key value pair. All right. So remember, the key is always in the left part of the colon and the right part is always the value. So let's see this example. So let's see this example. We have a variable called phone book that holds the key value pair of the name of some people and their phone numbers. If we want to print the phone number of Leo, we should print using the key name. So in our case, we would do phone book Leo. So now that we saw how dictionaries work, let's start implementing in here, okay? So I'm gonna build an empty dictionary and later on we're going to add things in our dictionary, okay? So basically I'm gonna create a dictionary called grocery, okay? And I'm gonna use here curly bracket because curly bracket means that this is a dictionary and this is it. All right, now we're gonna loop forever. And why are we gonna loop forever? Because we don't know until when we're going to keep receiving information from the user. We're only gonna stop receiving information from the user when the user uh, type in Ctrl D, okay? That's why we're gonna do a forever loop. But let's understand how while loop works. So basically we have two ways of looping in Python, all right? We already saw in the lecture that is using while or for loops. All right, so the while loop uh, is a loop that we can execute a set of statements as long as the condition is true. So as long as the condition that we're saying right next while is true, we're going to keep in this loop. Once this condition is false, we stop the loop and we get out of the while. All right, let's understand with this example. We 
are setting the variable i equals to 1, then we are creating a while loop. Remember that the while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as the condition is true. In our case, we're going to stay in our while loop until the value i is less than 4. So in the first iteration, i will be 1. Since 1 is less than 4, we're going to keep in our loop. Then we will print the value of i, that is 1, and increment the value i by 1. Next iteration, i will have value 2. Since 2 is less than 4, we're going to keep in our loop. Then we will print the value of i, that is 2, and increment the value of i by 1. Next iteration, i has value 3. Since 3 is less than 4, we're going to keep in our loop. Then we will print the value of i, that is 3, and increment the value of i by 1. Then we're going to check if the value of i is less than 4. Since the value of i is 4, our condition is not true anymore. So we don't continue in our while loop and we're done with our code. Well, so we saw how while loop works, all right? So in here, we're going to type in while and we don't have a particular condition that it's, once this condition is not true anymore, we're going to stop our while. So basically in here, we're gonna use the word true and this means that we're while true, so while forever, basically, we're going to be inside of our loop, all right? So I'm gonna hit right here, while true. Then we're going to use this try and accept EOF error. I already added it is in here, okay, because I got here from the hints. They kind of tell us, note that you can detect when the user has input inputted control D by catching an EOF error with code like this. So I basically added this code, okay? But let's understand how try and accept works. So basically here I'm using W3Schools as a really good resource if you have any question about programming, like understanding how a function work or what you, you can use in your code okay and basically the try block lets you test a block of code for errors and the accept block lets you handle the error okay let's see this example for example let's suppose we have this code try print x except we're gonna print an exception occurred. The try block will generate an exception because X is not defined. Then we're going to print an exception occurred. Let's see another example. In this code, we will try to print the division of 10 by 0, but we know from math that we can't have any division by 0. Then our code will go to accept and we will print an exception occurred. So, like we saw, we're gonna try something, right? And once this is not, uh, once we catch an error, we're going to the accept block. And in this case, our accept is this EOF error, all right? So, once the user type control D, we're going to stop our, we're going to the accept block here, all right? So, let's just start adding things in our try block. The first thing we have to get the user input. So, how can we do this? Let's see how input works. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal, the user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will start Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So like we saw, basically we're going to create a variable here to store the information about the user, all right? So whatever the user type in, we're going to store in this variable. In this case, I'm going to call my variable as item, okay? And I'm going to store the value of input, okay? And like we see in here, we, the, the prompt is not adding any message, all right? Once we start running the code, Let's see here, we run the code and the user types something, all right? So we don't need to display any message in this case. That's why I'm gonna leave this empty, okay? Now, the next thing we have to do is check if the item is already in the dictionary. So what is going on here? If we're going to add items in our dictionary, if the item already exists, we're gonna add one in our, we're gonna count plus one in our fruit. So for example, in here, 
we have banana twice, right? So if we already have banana in our dictionary, we're gonna add one more unit in our count. That's why we have here banana two. If it's the first time, if we don't have the item in our dictionary, we're going to start, we're going to initialize the key value pair saying the name of the item and the number one. The other way around, if we already have the dictionary, we're going to add one more in our count, okay? So this is what we have to do. So to do this, we have to understand how if and else condition work. So let's see how it works. Python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs. An if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false. If a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is storing the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else, printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. So now we're gonna do this checking, right? If it's already in the dictionary or not. So we're gonna do if, okay, item, and item, sorry. And there is a method that we can use, an operator that we can use, that it will check if the item that we're looking for contains, exists in the dictionary. All right, and this is the in operator. So let's see how it works. The in and not in are membership operators. They can take in two arguments and evaluate if one is a member of the other. All right, so let's understand in an example. If we want to check if this phrase, my name is Giovanna, contains the word Giovanna, we can do if Giovanna in my name is Giovanna, and since this string contains Giovanna, we're going to return true. If we want to check if the same phrase contains the name Peter, we can do if Peter in my name is Giovanna, and since this string does not contain Peter, we're going to return false. Well, so now that we saw the in operator, let's implement. So if item in inside of our dictionary, so in grocery, all right, what are we gonna do? We're going to uh, create, we're going to use the, we're going to add one in our account of this item, right? So we're gonna say grocery on position. Because in here, this is something interesting about dictionaries. If we want to access the value of a key value pair here of an element, so remember a dictionary is made about is made of key value pairs. If we want to access the value, we use the key name here. All right. So if the grocery on position item, okay, we're gonna add one in our value. All right. Otherwise, we're going to initialize our our dictionary with this item and we're gonna say that we only have one so far okay and, and this is kind of what we're gonna do in the try okay now in the except we need to print all the items in alphabetical order so what are we gonna do here we have to loop through our dictionary and we're going to print all the items all right and then we're going to stop the loop so let's understand how for loop works Let's use the same phone book dictionary that we used before to understand this example. If we want to print all key names in the dictionary one by one, we can simply do for key in phone book, where the word key can be any word or letter that you desire. Then we just need to print the variable key. So here we have phone book and the name of everyone and its phone number 
And if we do for key in phone book print key, we're gonna print G, Leo, and Bob. If we want to print all value names in the dictionary one by one, we can simply do the same loop we did before, but now using the key variable to access the value in the dictionary. So right now we're going to do for key in phone book again, but instead of printing key, we're gonna print phone book square brackets key. And now we can see that we're printing the respective phone number for everyone. So now that we saw how for loop works here in the dictionary, let's just start adding, okay? So I'm gonna do for key in, uh, now in grocery, right? So this way, what would happen? If I do for key in grocery, we're gonna print, sorry, let's see what happens if we do this way. We're gonna print key, okay? And then here in this top the loop, we're going to break, all right? So the break keyword will get us out of the loop. All right, we already used this in the previous code, but uh, this is how it works. If we want to stop here, we use a break word, okay? Later on, we can explain a little bit better, but let's check what is happening here inside. So if I do pythongrocery.py, what is gonna happen? If I put here apple, banana, banana, and control D, we're going to print apple banana, all right? But we're not printing the number. All right, so do you see here that we're printing all the elements? So now we have to be aware of some things. We have to fix some details in our code, all right? So what if I run here pythongrocery.py and I put apple and then capital apple? What are we expecting? We should receive two apples, right? Two apple in our, our output, but we receive one apple in capital and one apple in lower, all right? So now we have to find a way of get the user input and transform all, all the user's input in all lowercase. And this way we can add things all in the same case, all right? So to do this, let's see how the lower function works. Basically, if we have a variable x equals true, hello, all capital, and we want to print this variable all in lowercase, we can do x dot lower parentheses and the result will be hello all lower, all right? So let's implement this in our code. Well, so now that we saw how lower works, let's implement this in here, okay? So basically we're going to add here the dot lower, okay? And this is it, all right? Now let's see what happens if we test this again. If I put apple in capital and apple all lower, now it's printing two apples, okay? So now it's working. The final touch we have to take a look in here is that we are adding things here in the user, but they're expecting us to output all in uppercase, okay? So what are we gonna do? Here in our key, we're going to use the function dot upper. That is the other way around about the lowercase. So we know that the lower function returns all the letters in lowercase, so the upper do the other way around, get all, convert all the letters in upper case all right and we can do this in here so let's test one more time if i do here apple banana ice cream banana and apple we expect to receive two apples two bananas and one ice cream in order right and if i run this in here we are receiving this Okay, so this is kind of it in our code, all right? I know I didn't mention about the break word, so let's see the, uh, the this explanation about the break word. If we want to break out a while loop when the value of i is equals to one, we can do if i equals equals one, break. Once the value of i reaches one, we will stop the while loop and get out of it. In this case, since our value i starts being one and our while loop is i less than nine, we're going to do what? We would do only one loop and print only the value 1 because we would enter in this first if condition, if i equals equals 1. Since this is true, we're going to enter in this if condition and we're gonna break the while loop. And like you can see, in the end we're just printing the number 1. So like we already saw, the break word is kind of getting it, stopping the while loop. So it's getting us out of the while loop and then we can finish the code, okay? So this is basically it for the code. Now let's, let's do check 50 to see if we got everything green. So like we saw here, we got all green. So this means that we're done with our code, all right? So if you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, send here on the comment or schedule for meeting with us. The link is in the description. And I, we hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.